this. It is recording. <laughs> And welcome back to one of my videos, most likely on the ACD Unlimited YouTube channel. Um, I think it has been a while since I recorded the last video and I don't want to start this video with an apology while promising that there will be more frequently videos again in the near future. Because the honest truth is I don't know how much time I will have um, for doing that stuff. And the main reason why I'm doing this video is I just picked up a new camera which should allow me to just set up the camera and start recording instead of making sure the lighting is right and the focus is right and all that nonsense. But also I want to yeah, get getting used to talking in front of the camera again which is, if you have ever tried it, quite awkward, especially if you try to do it in a foreign language and try to be more or less serious about all of that stuff. So I honestly don't really know what I'm going to do with this video or with, uh, also with the next videos. If the video doesn't get too long, I want to show you a little bit um, the main workshop where I do most of my work. Maybe also the office corner upstairs. I don't know, talk a little bit about the background. You uh, usually enjoy it um, in, in the past and recent videos. Um, I don't know, just talking about the things going on behind the curtain. Um, the reason why I haven't been able to do much of, I don't know, posting on social media, making YouTube videos, writing newsletters, all that stuff I used to do almost by week within or between 2016 to 2019 is that within the last two years the interest and demand around ACD Unlimited or the book I'm doing, the upgrades, especially the Darwin series, um, has increased quite rapidly and I basically spent yeah, the last year just to figure out a way to keep up with the um, work, with the, with the daily and weekly work necessary to do in order to keep up with the, the, the business I'm running. And I haven't been able to do much work aside like developing new upgrades, new products, which I have ideas for for quite a while. And also, yeah, doing these things like recording a video or writing the newsletter. So things I really enjoy to do. And basically, I yeah really, really struggle to keep the balance between keeping up with the work and not feeling guilty for not having the time or being in the mood to do the stuff I used to enjoy. So yeah, within the recent time, I just tried to get those things in order, reschedule my daily and weekly work again, and also working on my mental and physical health. Um, there's lots of cool books and videos and things to explore if you're interested and curious about that. Things that helped me overcome my depression burnout situation I am used to fight for several years now. Um, just write me an email and I'm happy to, to um, show you or, or I don't know, um, recommend you some, some books and stuff that help me figure out some stuff which looks quite promising at the moment. I don't know, maybe next week I'm back into burnout. Um, jokes aside, so this is the main reason why I haven't done much of public work and presenting stuff in the past. Um, I do have some plans for a few new upgrades um, and also there's going to be some more minor changes internally which help me or which will help me to maintain my um, amount of, of weekly working hours consistently. So I just try to be somewhere between 40 to 50 hours in total with the work I do with ACD in order to have some time for myself and to, I don't know, stay in shape mentally and physically. Um, I think with that said, this is enough of personal nonsense talk. Um, I hope I have set a timestamp so you can skip this whole nonsense if you're not interested in that. But 
back to the other topic I want to show you, which is my main little workshop. So where we're standing right here um, is, um, or right now, is basically the basement of our apartment, which used to be um, a, a building of, of a bank, I think four to five years ago. And the current owner and our landlord um, developed this whole building into three or four flats, which one of this one of those flats is ours. And yeah, this is quite cool because we have a, enough space for for the two of us and the dogs to live upstairs and having a 90 square meter and in imperial units it's it's quite large for what i'm used to have back in my old workshop um but yeah this is this is quite cool because i have a 90 square meter workshop downstairs and the little office corner upstairs where i'm able to do the or the the, the main work around acd so assembling the pedals um and also yeah Everything besides getting the parts machined, which I'm currently um, have, a, have I've, I've currently outsourced um, this uh, process of getting parts machined to a small shop in in Slovenia, run by by two guys which are really really passionate about CNC machining. So I'm really thankful for having this opportunity and the support from those guys. But everything else um, is still taking place. Here and yeah, long story short, I think I just pick up the camera and show you where we are. So, this is the stair Alyssa painted, I think, a year ago, um, quite colorful. But yeah, downstairs from the living area, we come into my little workshop. And let's start to the right. This is the photo and video corner you usually or you used to say in plenty of my pictures and videos it's a quite narrow space so usually i had set up the camera over here and just squeeze try to to squeeze my butt between this little gap here sit down and talk some nonsense um next to this little video corner i have my i don't know how this is called in english honestly but it's basically a shelf and storage for little parts, mostly screws and ball bearings, things I frequently need for just, yeah, assembling pedals and upgrades. Then the average chaos starts to the left, where I have some parts which are going to be anodized um, on Monday, so tomorrow, and I just have to sort those parts through and getting everything prepared for the anodizing process. Also, I've started manufacturing direct drive upgrades recently again, so these will be available shortly for Tama Iron Cobra, Speed Cobra, Pull Eliminators and maybe a few other pedals. Um, that's something cool and something I've been looking forward to for a while. So, behind this corner we have another corner full of shelves. This is where I keep or kept most of the Darwin parts. I recently added another corner to the right where I stuck some more parts. But besides that, I've also started collecting a few weird pedals like this. The brighter catapult, I think it's called. Um, this is the Sonor, um, oh, how is it called? It's a giant step, a, a twin pedal or a dual do motion pedal um, and really really old compression spring style direct drive timer pedal and a few others if you're interested in that I would like to show you each individual of those pedals in extra videos just let me know but yeah this is mostly parts 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 and more parts also inside here here's a little corner of assembling stuff on the other side, I do have my soldering corner, which is mainly used to um, assemble and solder the sensors and sensor units for the game changer trigger unit. So I'm currently in the process of assembling a few more units. But yeah, this is a little simple soldering corner, um, followed by a really rough looking trash area 
And then we do have lots of foam inserts and wall cases here. So I get um, the foam for the foam insides nearby and have them laser cut at a friend's shop. Then I just need to glue them together and put them inside the cases. And this is how all cases are being assembled. Um, over here, right to next. So this is where we started and now we are here. There's a little press for pressing in ball bearings and all that stuff. Then we have here my main workshop bench along with the other side of the main workshop bench inside. This, um, these drawers. There are also several more parts, so like here, lots of, of hi-hat parts, for example. Um, more hi-hat parts. Over here we have a few beta parts. This is quite empty because I just cleaned it out recently. Then here are a little bit more parts for strap drive conversion. This is the corner where I uh, just recently added some more parts for, for the Darwin pedals to help me to keep up with yeah, the inventory and prevent any further chaos. So yeah, this is where most of the stuff and most of my work actually happens. Then we have this shelving corner I added recently, but Behind this corner, there is my little 3D printing and laser engraving area. So these are basically two simple machines, a 3D printer most of you are familiar with. And this is a phaser laser um, device which allows me to engrave uh, metal parts, mostly um, uh, anodized aluminum parts, but also stainless steel parts, which is quite cool. Um, Behind this laser engraving and 3D printing area, this is my little chaotic looking because I've purchased too many cardboards looking um, packing area. So this is where I keep the now mostly famous um, ACD chocolate, which is just a, um, a Tony's Chocolonis wrapped in ACD paper chocolate. You guys seem to enjoy quite a lot. Um, besides that, there's nothing special going on. Lots of wrapping paper, packing material, more packing material, and that's it. Um, a little corner I left out is my actual my very personal drum set. So I've never been into making um, music on a, on a more on a serious level, and I just recently try to getting back into making music and actually learn how to make music and this little hybrid kit um, which i may be going to talk a little bit more in a separate video um, is that is, is is the little thing that allows me to do that so basically these are mesh heads um, with a self-developed internal trigger system, low volume cymbals picked up by two overheads, everything goes into a mixer and yeah, this allows me to have a more or less silent setup for practicing the fundamentals of drumming, which I'm terrible in at the moment. So next thing or the very last thing in this shop is, I, I told you this used to be a bank and this whole area was part of the uh, safe where they kept all the things with, with value. So I think they, I don't know, separated it over here and did a few other weird things, but this used to be a safe as far as I've been told. And this is my dirty workshop area. So I have a main workbench over here where I do lots of drilling, cutting threads and that stuff. Simple drilling device, um, a router for cutting wooden stuff, mostly the beta surfaces. Um, over here I have a small lathe which just allows me to do some more prototyping. This little machine was quite necessary and quite helpful in the past already. Over here we have a few more tools. And that's, yeah, basically it. This is the whole main workshop. So I just try to flip it around again so you can see 
me for whatever reason and yeah this is where all the work around AC Day and the whole assembling um, actually happens. I do have um, a little office corner upstairs which I'm going to show you now. Um, flip it around again. So the main issue is that everything has to be carried over these stairs outside our flat and there's another set of stairs and yeah basically lots of exercise lots of unnecessary exercise and there's a dog hello lava but yeah this is the rest of my workshop or actually let's call it this is my little office corner um i recently picked up learning day piano and i'm quite terrible in it but it makes or it, it, it is fun so i just try to keep maintain it um i don't know for what it's worth um this is a little height adjustable table which is quite cool because it allows me to prevent any further chaos no it allows me to yeah do some work and answering emails also standing um and yeah that's something quite cool to be honest and i think with that being said the video is already way too long and yeah maybe we will see us in the near future in another video maybe it will take a few weeks but with that being said it's just a matter of time and have a nice week have a nice weekend whenever you watch this video and see you soon Cheers.